Kuman, Nikimoto, and I run the North American operation for Future Facilities. We're a, a global company, uh, small though. We have about 50 employees. Our specialty is data center simulation, and so we'll go into what all that means. Uh, but we do it in a, in a very specific way that applies to the operations of the data center. So that's the, the topic of the discussion today. So what we're, we're calling it predictive data center infrastructure management. So it's adding a component of being able to predict what's going to happen, cause and effect, before you actually make any changes to your data center. And there's a very, very important reason for doing this, which we'll explain in the presentation. So just uh, by way of uh, introduction, um, I am a mechanical engineer. Uh, I know we come across a lot of uh, electrical engineers or, or, or facilities types of uh, folks. So my background is um, uh, aerofoil management, heat transfer, uh, uh, efficiency, that sort of thing at the entire data center scale. So I've been designed for boxes, the servers themselves and then also integrating those into the, the data center also. And then with me is my colleague, Robert Schmidt, from Future Facilities. Many of you probably know Robert already. So let's talk about predictive. We'll talk about what the capacity management problem is. We'll set a baseline. Uh, and then we will go into why capacity is lost in the data center. And that sets the stage for introducing the need for simulation techniques. Uh, we have a case study to show you how predictive modeling can help avoid major problems in your data center. And then we're going to, if we have time, we'll introduce what we're calling the, uh, the ACE performance metric. So it's a, more, it's a more complete way of tracking how your data center is performing over time as you're changing it, as you're adding IT equipment, the decommissioning, and so forth. If you, if you are tracking this ACE performance metric, You'll have a good handle on the performance of your data center at all times. So here is the capacity challenge uh, in one slide. So everybody who raises money, builds a data center, has some idea on how the capacity will be used over time. And that idea or that assumption is used to lay out the physical data center in a, in a design scenario. And when you're designing a data center, uh, whether it's your mechanical firm that you've hired, uh, they'll have to make assumptions about the types of IT equipment that's going to go into the room, how it's going to fill up the room over time. And inherent in those assumptions is that your infrastructure resources, space, power, cooling, networking, will be used up in a synchronous way until you've filled up the data center, and at that point, you've used all the capacity in the room. So that's the design assumption when uh, a data center is being laid out and you first invested your first $50 million or so. But in reality, everything changes. The IT equipment that's bought looks nothing like the design assumptions, the way it's installed, uh, the way it uses resources, totally different. And it's that difference that destroys, literally destroys capacity in your room and leaves you <coughs> with stranded either space, stranded power, stranded cooling, or some combination of all of those. And when you've spent $50 million to get, say, one megawatt out of the room, at the end of the life of the data center, you find out you spent $50 million to get 600, 700 uh, uh, kilowatts or uh, Megawatts, I'm a mechanical engineer, sorry. Electrical <laughs> terms. Anyways, um, that's, that's the reality of it. And, and a lot of people are very familiar with this scenario where they're, they have trouble getting all of the data center potential out of the room. So, this is the challenge. And the problem is, is that capacity is lost to suboptimal integration of IT equipment and the facility. And it's very hard to avoid because you cannot know in advance when you design the data center what IT equipment is going to come in, what it's going to look like, how it operates, and so forth. The 
Gartner conferences. Um, their surveys say that 70% of data center facilities <laughs> fail to meet their capacity requirements. Uptime Institute did surveys as well, and 54% uh, of respondents ranked data center capacity as the driver for the long-term approach. Um, recently, Dr. John Cooney presented at the DCD saying that the biggest problem for data center operators today is lost capacity. And, uh, and the problem is very expensive, he, he mentioned in his presentation. Millions are, are at stake. And we've done, as a, as a consulting firm, we've done a lot of consulting across many data centers, modular, non-modular, race floor, non-race floor, and we see this problem uh, in varying degrees in all of those data centers. Um, and what we've seen, if we, we've done a, a survey of most of the jobs that we've done, uh, about 30% of the capacity potential of the room is lost to this problem. And 30% would uh, is, is relevant to the, the module that you're dealing with. So if your module is the room, it's 30% of the room. If your module is a row, it's 30% of the, the row. And if you look at how much total data center space is out there in the world, the numbers start to become very interesting. So this is mainly for, for shock value more than anything. But um, we are estimating, based on our own surveys, that uh, about 11 gigawatts of capacity is lost out there right now, today, which equates to about 73 million square feet of data center space. And almost a quarter trillion dollars worth of capital that's out there. So this problem is it's huge. So here is the, from our customer survey. When the intent is for about a megawatt out of the room, what typically gets lost is about 30%. And, and this is what we'll go into detail about. So here's some information about the cost of lost capacity. So um, based on a report that was done a few years ago for total cost of ownership of a data center, not including the IT equipment, the, the cost for capacity is about $8.3 million per megawatt. I believe that was for a tier three facility. And based on this um, suboptimal utilization of capacity that is pretty much involved in every data center, the real cost of that capacity goes up tremendously to about $15.5 million per megawatt. And this is just a utilization problem. So you, you think you're able to use a one megawatt, you're only able to use a lot less, and so the cost per megawatt goes up almost double. And the components are the original capex for building the data center. It requires more operational resources to hand it to <coughs> absorb this, this capacity utilization problem, and the energy costs go up as well. One interesting thing to note, though, is there is a lot of discussion about energy efficiency, especially for the cooling system for data centers. And we're, we're not sure why there's so much focus on just energy efficiency, because when you look at how much can be saved by being efficient with your cooling system, relative to focusing on capacity of your room, capacity utilization. The numbers are they're pretty low. So all this focus is in this area, in the conferences that we go to, when we go to clients, they want, they want to know how to run their cooling systems more efficiently. But we tell them yeah, that's important, but relative to what we call the elephant in the room, lost capacity, it, 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 it actually is very insignificant. So lost capacity is the biggest total cost of ownership problem that is facing data center operators. So with so much at stake, why is it so common? So that's the question we ask next. And I think really what it comes down to is two things. Number one is that there isn't, until today, there isn't really any way to manage and monitor directly capacity as we're gonna define it here. You can monitor power, you can monitor your asset movement, you can monitor PUE now pretty effectively, but not capacity as we're going to define it. So without a way of seeing capacity evolve and play out in your room, no wonder 
You know, nobody's paying attention. And so power monitoring is not the same as capacity monitoring. Power monitoring is important. You have to know how much you've used and how much you have left on your floor. But if you're, unless you're monitoring capacity, you're not going to know that there's this stranded component building in your room. And until you hit that point where server availability becomes an issue. Again, we'll go into that in more detail. I'm sorry, you're talking so common. Um, we said earlier that um, there's nobody, you're not monitoring capacity in your room. There wasn't, until now, there wasn't a way to do it. So what happens is, uh, typically, is that a data center operator will fill out their space, monitoring power and, and space alone, until they hit that point where server availability problems start to pop up, either due to hotspots in, in their room, or maybe due to uh, power distribution issues that they didn't have a handle on. And it's at that point where it becomes risky to keep going. And if, if you stop there and go into a new data center, then you've stranded all of the rest of the capacity potential in the room. So that's typically how it plays out. But what they're not seeing is this lost capacity component building. So here's that room again. And again, this, this module is three aisles, not just one. And uh, on, on the day that they turn, uh, that they get the key and are, are entering the data center, the potential is 100%. <clears throat> but as soon as cabinets are selected, and as soon as the first IT layout is decided upon, and the first units purchased, right, right when that happens, capacity drops almost immediately. It's like driving a car, a new car off the lot. All of a sudden, your potential drops tremendously because the cabinets are typically different than the design assumptions. The units will definitely be different. How they're, how they're starting to be planned out will be different as well. And it's those differences that cut away into the capacity potential room. So this is day one. Already about 20-25% of the capacity is, is stranded, but you can't see it because, like I was saying, until now, there isn't any way to monitor this, this effect. Usually just monitoring power or monitoring the assets themselves, but not capacity. And then, because you're blind to this capacity problem, you keep going. You keep loading, you keep loading. Again, until the point at which, say, hotspots are forming in your room, now you have an availability problem on top of this capacity problem. And you can't turn off equipment now and move things around. So if, if that's the case, then essentially you've, you've lost the rest of this capacity in the room. So the capacity losses, it's important to know that they happen immediately. They don't happen way down the road. Uh, you, you won't feel them until way down the road when they become availability problems. But they happen immediately, and that's why it's important to, to start monitoring capacity immediately. And when they happen immediately and you can't see it, that's why this lost capacity problem is so, is so common. Another issue we think that I won't dwell on too much here is that is the way the money is spent on the data center. All of the money spent on the data center is distributed to various groups who have all their own interests and, and objectives in the data center. And they will conflict. And they'll, they'll undermine the data center performance. So IT has their own objectives, maybe to reduce deployment time. Facility has an objective to save on energy. Uh, the IT groups, they may want to virtualize their servers to get maybe more computing in the same footprint. So all of those are good objectives to have, but unless you see the impact of those objectives on the ultimate objective, which is capacity utilization. You will lose capacity in your room. So this is uh, kind of an organizational issue that, that probably would have to be addressed for, um, you know, for real capacity protection in data centers. And just as an example, we have a very simple total cost of ownership um, timeline from year one all the way to, say, a 15-year data center. And with the lost capacity component in the data center, which, which will always be the case, the 
the annual spend is a little bit higher each year than the assumed spend. But usually the budgets are managed annually. They're not consolidated into a total spend where the actual problem shows up. So with loss capacity, the total cost of this data center could be, and this is about a one megawatt facility, could be about $115 million versus um, the budget of $60 million. So that's a massive overrun uh, and, a, and a, a cost that a company has to absorb because of this problem. But nobody, as far as we can tell, is actually tracking total cost of ownership in this way. So the problem goes unseen. So here's the answer to your question. What we mean by capacity is essentially the intersection of space, power, and cooling with each unit of IT equipment as it sits in the data center. That's what capacity means. You have it in the design because it was designed that way, but the design will change because the IT configuration is going to be different. And so with a new IT configuration, you run the risk of throwing the alignment of these distributions out of whack, causing loss capacity. And so when one or more of these resources drips from the IT configuration, that's, that's what we mean by loss capacity. And how does, how does these resource distributions, how do they drip from the IT configuration? Well, we have a way of illustrating it. It's this game called Tetris, that a lot of people are familiar with. Tetris, uh, imagine the Tetris board being the data center and the Tetris blocks being the IT equipment. Now, if Tetris was played in this way, it'd be very easy to use up all of the Tetris board. One block size, very well-defined filling up of the space. Those are the design assumptions being used to lay out the data center. But in reality, Tetris blocks come in different shapes and sizes, different orientations which is kind of the way uh, the IT equipment looks when it comes into the data center. And under those conditions, plus the fact that you have, uh, as operators, you have very little time to get these IT equipment installed and up and running, gaps in capacity form on the Tetris board and also in the data center. So essentially what, what uh, IT operations is, is playing this big, very expensive game of, and very complicated game of Tetris 